listening to this video tutorial. This is Mark Labar at BlenderPassion.com and I will be showing you how to create this laptop. So first of all, I'm just going to apologize in advance if there's any background noise I can't cut out. I've just recently arrived in the Philippines to study abroad as well as to help out with some churches in the general community. So I'm hoping that they don't start with karaoke in the middle of this tutorial. Let's get started. So to start off, I'm just going to delete everything. And then we can start adding in our background image. Now the hardest part of this tutorial was finding some decent background images that I could actually display in a video tutorial. But I have found them. You can download them directly off of BlenderPassion.com or you can go to AllFreeDownload.com there will be links in the description below and if you go to the top and click on the vectors tab you can just search macbook and you will find all of these images right there that is in vector svg format you'll need a program such as inkscape or adobe illustrator to open them up and then save them as a png at whatever resolution you wish save it in my tutorial folder here and laptop preview so to start off I'm just going to add a frame here I'm going to go into top view and hit control 2 to add a subsurf modifier we're going to bump it up to 3 on the render and press optimal display then we can tab into edit mode and start to scale it up a bit so we can shape the base of our laptop. Now we're going to start adding in our edge loop. And if we do it two at a time and then scale along the X axis, we get a more symmetrical look. And we'll do the same for the Y axis here. And I'll just continue to position these edge loops just so they look quite nice. our size view then we're going to extrude it down and then select everything and hit control N to make the normal consistent and remove those shading artifacts and now we're going to add some more edge loops in here actually we're going to make the keyboard here and since the edge loop is already that close I'm just going to move it up a bit now if we add two more here, we're going to scale it along the x-axis. Then if we select our face here, we're going to extrude it down a bit to make an indentation for our keyboard. Now we're going to add in a few edge loops to better define the indentation and a couple on the y-axis. And I'm just going to make sure everything lines up there. So I'll add in an edge fit modifier and that will help us with some of the artifacts from the subsurf modifier on the more flatter areas. going to work on the actual tools of our keyboard now. So we'll 
scale that down a bit, go into edit mode, and position it as push to width. It is very important that everything lines up correctly because we'll be using this same reference image as our texture. And if everything doesn't line up correctly, you'll end up have some weird texture error there. going to start speeding through this process here. I really don't want to watch you do all of these speeds. Waste all your time. Now I'm going to select the tool and we're just going to bring back our last shape and we're going to extrude it out just to give it some sort of depth. We're going to make all our adjustments on our first two here before duplicating it across for the other two. So now I'll select the top and bottom edges here to save on a few vertices and polygons, we're going to add in a mean tweak here, just to give it n that nice flat look on the edges. on what I believe to be the speakers of this broadcast. I'm going to take a couple edge loops that are already there, move them over, add another one, and do the same to the other side. I'll just move that one over, add another edge loop, and bring this edge loop up. And we'll bring this one down just to match this edge. select the faces, and we're just going to extrude those down to give a bit of indentation. Now we'll add a couple edge loops to the side, and a few on the y-axis. And the same thing to the other side. work on the power button here. This edge loop is already pretty much in place. So we're going to add another one on the other side. And two more for the top and bottom. Now we can select the face. We're going to extrude that down. doesn't look all that good right now, but if we bump up the view to three, you'll see that everything looks nice and smooth, and that's what we'll be rendering. Now we're going to work on the mouse pad, and we're going to add in another edge loop, and a couple more here. going to extrude that downward. Maybe not so much since it's only a little mouse pad. Then we're going to add in a couple edge loops. Now 
let's hit our space bar to separate it and this will be the mouse speed for our mouse pad now we're just going to position it accordingly make sure it's centered and scale it down a bit just split those vertices up and we're going to position them to put a little space in between them. Now we're going to set the focus here. We'll actually create focus here and select this I believe and then we're going to add in a shape here in the bottom of this as well. Then we can add an edge loop here and we're going to do the same for the other side. And an edge loop. So now I'll scale it down a bit more just to get something that looks proportional. this will be for our screen. So apparently our vector image isn't completely orthographic, so I'm going to have to improvise a little here. And we're just going to try to position it to the best of our abilities here. Generally the size of the screen should match the size of our laptop there, so that's what I'll be going with. And we're going to extrude it back a bit, add in a subsurf modifier. the face here. We're just going to extrude that back slightly just to give our screen a little more depth. Now I'm just going to start adding in the edge loops here. everything we're just going to position it right on the origin there and this will give us a pivot point well actually if I position it a little better it should give us a pivot point on which to hinge our laptop screen select the back here and then we're just going to scale that in slightly just to give a bit more quality and uh, detail now we're going to select the bottom of our laptop base move it up a bit and we're going to extrude that down 
and tear down this tree. And we're going to add in a couple edges here. everything and simply scale it around the outside so that you can at least draw a line down the base. keyboard and we're just going to go into top view and hit U and project from view and we can open up the UV editor and then open up our top view image we're just going to position these trees right on the keyboard there simply scale in our keyboard to match it. This is just finicky tedious work, but the more time you spend on this, the better looking your texture will be. everything start fresh adding our texture coordinate node I know we'll need of course the spectral mapping node and our image type move these nodes over and duplicate our mapping node here and we're going to add a noise texture here and then we're going to change the viewport color to something more noticeable because I simply did not connect this to the material output node.
can we get and you can see we have these little texture artifacts at the edges that's because the mapping wasn't correct and accurate enough but that's fine it does give our keyboard a more uh, specular look and now I'm just going to add in a bump this into the vector input bracket and start connecting up these nodes here. And we're going to connect the bump output to the normal input of our shaders here. And you can see we have our effect. We have a bit of discoloration but it's a little large, so I will bump up the scale value of our noise texture. And now it's obviously way too strong, so I'll bump down the strength of our bump node. And now I'm going to show you a little trick I learned from Tim Kamel at DrumTricky.com. And basically what this does is it sees all but the camera rays from calculating the bump displacement. So essentially your image will render faster with virtually no change in appearance. And now when we render this, we notice that there is no bump, and that's simply because I have the wrong plot in the color 1 and color 2 input. So I'll flip that around, and you can see our bump is back here. to add a new material and this material will be the side edges of our keys so now I will press control I to invert our selection and then pr press control numpad plus and then that will just select all of our edges. And now I'll just start putting together our material. I want something that really matches the top. edge material to our mouse button and now we're going to select the faces underneath our keyboard going to put the node editor down here I find it more convenient so I'm going to add a new material and I'm going to name this laptop base and then add another material and this will be for the material that is under our keyboard and I'll assign those first that we 
some kind of silvery look. Keep in mind I'm not taking too much time to stress over all the minute details of these materials. They're not going to be as good as they were in the finished result. However, you can check them out in the finished result just by simply downloading the .blend directly off of blendercraft.com. these corner faces and I'm just going to assign that to the keyboard underneath here and I will add a new material to our laptop screen and another material under that
see those nice reflections coming off of our glossy shaders. So now I'm going to work on the green edges here. So we have a new material from the laptop base, green on it, and we're going to change the color of the book. scale down our laptop and bring it down to the grid floor, add in a plane, and we're going to go with the standard backdrop on this part a bit. going to make sure that it fits within our camera view. Now we're adding in our white source here. This is going to be our filter and prototype of triangle size. I'm going to add in a new material and change that to emission. a nice bluish tint. Now we'll change our world setting to an environment texture and we're going to add in our HDR eye mask and that'll just give us nice smooth interesting reflections and lighting. And we'll give our backdrop a nice dark color. bump down the strength of our world shader, or the world lighting index, and bump down the strength of our light bulb here. So that's looking pretty good, as long as I can't see the HDR eye mask. position our camera I'm going to zoom out a bit and rotate it around the X axis now I'm going to rotate our backdrop to face our camera render at a full 10 samples. Going to bump down the strength and change 
think the strength of our light force here is that I'm going to give that another run now. And that's pretty much it. So if this tutorial has helped you in any way, please subscribe. It really does help. You can download the finished project at blendercrafting.com. And thank you for watching.